This video is kind of a minor detective story about the Ukraine Neptune missile and whether its seeker might be susceptible to cross-polarization jamming. And the reason I think that's an interesting question is because the antenna type used by Neptune is appears in other places, including in enemy missiles. So uh, I'll preface this video, it's three, I think three parts, uh, by saying it's a techie, geeky set of videos pitched at the expert level. Um, uh, maybe at some point somebody might come out of the woodwork and say, how do you know anything? And so I'll point to this and say, well, that's how I know something. But uh, I, I wanted to get it uh, down anyway. So uh, about six months before the Moskva was sunk, and it was sunk uh, by two Neptune missiles on the 20, uh, 14th of April, 2022. But about six months before that, I came across this really strange looking photo. And it looked like it was related to missiles. So I had a look at it, I think about it, and just forgot about it, hived it away in the, my files. I wasn't sure what I was looking at, but it's definitely something new. So then the Moskva was sunk uh, and uh, Neptune missiles came to the top of the news cycle. So, well, uh, astounding development in the war. Uh, so I looked up the Neptune missile and I found photographs of the seeker without the radome, of course, and also a beautiful little video clip of it in motion, the seeker antenna moving. And that, as soon as I saw the antenna, I connected with this photo I had seen six months earlier. And so, okay, that thing has to do with the Neptune uh, seeker for sure. So here is the photo that I found. This is some version of the microstrip traces for the Neptune seeker antenna. Neptune uses a flat plate array design whose radiating elements appear to be hexagonal microstrip patch antennas and each one is in its own little cavity. Now we can see that the number of array elements in this trace photo matches the number of elements and the positions in the photo of the Neptune flat plate array antenna. And so do the little hex patches in the center of each cavity. A little online digging revealed that uh, hex shaped microstrip antennas are circularly polarized or they can be circularly polarized. And after a little more digging, it looks like hex patch designs were developed for 5G wireless communication, which was interesting all by itself. Anyway, it looks like this type of antenna design might be used in other seekers, such as BrahMos, which is produced by India. But there are no photos of that BrahMos antenna that show the microstrip traces. They're, they're covered up in the front, each radiating element. We can, however, see that the BrahMos radiating elements are square, and that to me says circular polarization just because of the symmetry. I mean, that's not for sure, but it's what I think right now. Anyway, a while ago I made a video about cross-pole jamming against circularly polarized seekers, and here's the link. Uh, the principles are the same as for cross-pole against a linearly polarized antenna, except circular polarization is a linear superposition of both vertical and horizontal polarizations simultaneously, with a phase shift uh, between the vertical and horizontal field components. And now if the vertical E field lags the horizontal field by 90 degrees, let's say that's right hand circular. And then if it's a 90 degree phase lag, then it's left hand circular. And the radome tweaks the polarization in the way already described in the earlier video for linear polarization. It illustrates uh, that circular polarization can be understood by decomposing it into a vertical and horizontal components. Now, for a circularly polarized seeker, it's necessary to modulate the ellipticity of the reverse sense circular polarization. I explained that in the earlier video, how in principle, a two channel drift from jammer could be designed to do this. So here's a question. Does the Neptune seeker antenna covered by an ogive radome have a sufficiently high cross polar gain that the seeker could be susceptible to cross pole jamming? I mean, all things otherwise being equal. Well, three years ago, I decided to add a model of the Neptune antenna to Engage. It was pretty easy to do. I was already a flat plate array antenna model in Engage, and, and the Neptune is a flat plate design, so that's fine. Uh, the number of elements in the horizontal and vertical directions uh, need to be matched to, to the Neptune photos, and, and so does their spacing, but that, that's straightforward software configuration, I mean model configuration using the user interface. 
Um, the catch is that the flat plate model in Engage uses slot wave, slotted waveguide apertures as the radiating elements, whereas we can see Neptune uses the hex microstrip patch in a cavity. Uh, so those of us who know who have studied antenna theory know that if, uh, uh, if we ignore the mutual coupling between the elements, then the radiation pattern of an array is the multiplication of two functions. The, one is called the array factor, and the other is called the element factor. So the array factor is the interference pattern caused by all of the radiating elements if each element is modeled as an isotropic radiator. And that means each element has the same gain in every direction, which is physically impossible, but that's that's how we solve it mathematically. The array factor is only depends on the phase and amplitude of, and the position of the radiating elements, uh, and of course the radio frequency that it's operating at. On the other hand, the element factor is the radiation pattern of a single radiating element, and it is the envelope that is applied, a gain envelope that's applied to the array factor. That's why we multiply the two. The bottom line is that the only thing missing from the engaged model, broadly speaking, is, a ra is the radiation pattern of a single circularly polarized hex microstrip cavity backed antenna, uh, you know, the kind that's used for 5G wireless telecommunications. So I'll interrupt, interrupt myself here just to say that where we're going with this overall is to try to figure out what the Neptune seeker antenna's relative cross-polar gain is or might, or might be to figure out whether it might be jammable by cross-pole jamming. So continuing, uh, we know that the radome will enhance the cross-polar gain of the underlying antenna, whatever that gain is. So the question really is, bottom line, what's the cross-polar gain of the hex microstrip radiating elements? So basically, we know the vector radiation pattern of an infinitesimal dipole, but what does the vector radiation pattern look like for a hex patch microstrip antenna in a resonating cavity that's circularly polarized. So I had a good think about that. It's like, oh no, electromagnetic derivation of the radiation pattern of this thing. I don't want to get into that. But then a light bulb came on. And I think it's really easy actually to, uh, to see and to explain and to express mathematically. Uh, but to explain it, I'll have to go to Toys R Us and get a couple of props. But I will put that in the next video along with um, two technical reference papers I found that bear directly on the polarization purity of this kind of a radiating element. And uh, that's in the uh, next uh, video.